Hi, good morning. If you look at the ancient time, our human beings activities is to prevail with the sunrise and with the sunset. Because there was very little artificial light and then the fire was created and yet activities remained during the sun was the governing factor. <coughs> Work was not easy. It was quite tough for the people. The men and the women, they had to do a lot of things. Today with the advent of science, you notice your work has become much easier. Anything that earlier days, I remember my mother, my grandmother used to grind masala for about 24, 25 people in the home. And it used to take two hours. Haldi paste and chili paste and ginger paste and onion paste. Today, all you do, either you got a ready-made paste or you want to make it fresh, you just put it into the mixie and do Z, it is done. But along with this, though the work environment, living conditions have changed a lot, you have scientific modernized facilities. But what in the earlier days was prevailing, which was simplified mind, Mind was very peaceful, happy, less of complications. Today what is happening is, yours and my thought processes are causing riot in our head. Education process similarly, tons of information had to be remembered by memory and then vomit it out when there is an examination or assessment of question answer sessions. And with that, again, that thought processes which are complicated, you're all the time worrying about the future, you've got great ambitions and desires and wish list, and when they don't get fulfilled, you worry even more and you're also concerned about the past. Anxiety. This is what used to happen. Now I hope this doesn't happen. And in the bargain you and I have forgotten what is called present today. Now. So these beautiful presentations as our talented teachers are presenting to each one of us. This is something which is of very little presence in most of the other countries than India and particularly some of the Southeast Asian countries. Along with this, what happens is, you will see when you go ahead and celebrate something like that, your mind becomes peaceful for a while, you are not worried so much. These are the handed down traditions and the rich heritage of the ancient so do spread it along the children. Talk about whatever you hear, learn. When you talk to someone, you'll automatically make up your mind to know a little more. <clears throat> so your experience of learning becomes better. And when you talk about it, you automatically learn a little more and it becomes your wisdom, not just information. It becomes a risk. You, you now know. If you look carefully, look at your mobile. Now, you know at the most of our mobiles, which you're not using, but lots of apps are continuously running, no? So what happens? Your mobile's battery is running down. And soon enough you say, oh, I have to charge my mobile. 
And without the mobile, you're totally lost. You have handed over your life to the mobile. What is the implication with today's this incident? Your thought processes are continuously draining you out. You always look around you. Maybe not so prevalent over here within the school, but the same person outside, you watch. You go to mall, when you're coming down, take care, look at the people's face. At least six to nine people out of the ten that you will see, you will see they're going to frown. The mind is preoccupied. Thinking about something. Those are the apps which are draining you out. So what should you do? Have you noticed? The camera, which is, let's say, recording the event in the morning, it doesn't have any thought process in the back. It is just recording as you are. But the moment you look at your husband or wife or the children or the colleagues and the friends, the moment you see your preconceived notion about that person of the earlier flashes and hits you on the head. And now what do you do? If she or he is my type, then he smile. And if not, you suddenly look elsewhere. And you say, oh, 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 I hope she doesn't see me. So what is happening? You're not the camera lens anymore. You've got a preconceived apps is running at the background and draining you out. You say a harsh word to someone and someone else, whether it retorts back or not, you will continue to think about it, maybe for days, maybe for months. That's what is draining you out. And that is what is creating your misery, suffering, sickness, disease. These celebrations have got a meaning for it. Can you and I also have, every time that we look at a person, like the lens of a camera, every time you look at the child, can you look at the child with this full potential? Not what a disturbing child he is in the class, or how she is not participating, very shy and very timid. Every time if you look at a person and if you start thinking about that this child, this person, that we are in the life together, that got tremendous potential. So what do you do? You're looking at potential of the perfections. That's what makes you a great person. You look at the great saintly people. They never condemn anyone. Look at a higher example. What do you and I little know about, let's say, God, Allah, Aaron, whatever name you call. Look at this unified field, this cosmic energy. It's always there supporting you. Yeah, there are sometimes a little bit of tsunami and tornado and thunderstorm comes in. But it passes off soon enough. There's a beautiful statement in the ancient Indian philosophy. Whenever you have a tough time, just know, not think, but know, this too shall pass. This will also go away. Now while that is a pretty good thinking and you will feel happy, but remember, when you are feeling very happy and peaceful and joyful, this too shall pass. So what are you? You are the camera lens. You are supposed to be that. 
Whatever comes in, you record, you learn from the rich experience. Whichever the environment you have been placed for, don't think it is per chance, by accident. Whoever came and sat next to you, whether for a few minutes, across the restaurant and another table, or let's say you're traveling by plane or by a train, somebody comes and sits next to you, and you start to talk to each other, and you say, yes, same, same. So what happens? The other person says, now I have to get down. You say, where do you want to get down? Come on, let's travel together. So what happens? It becomes your life partner, or maybe your child, or maybe your in-laws. So yours and my intention is to be the camera lens, but don't be the wall. Walls don't have any emotions. So camera lens is with human excellence, is the human eye, not the human garbage. Garbage is the wrong apps running and draining you out. But you could have essential services, huh? Then your battery life is much longer. Then you will live. As for Bill Gates' latest research, shift is happening 2017. His team's prediction is, and Clark Fish from UK is the research scientist head, they say that now onwards, most of you are going to cross 100 years of age in good health. That's the betterment of the living conditions. But just by living like a python snake or an elephant or a crocodile or a tortoise, what good is it? But if you live a short time, but create such kind of an ambience and environment that you become deathless, not a physical living, but a spiritual living. So these great masters of the celebrations who created it, notice we still talk about them. They are not dead and gone. Buddha is not there. Jesus is not there. Muhammad is not there. Shankaracharya is not there. But they are always there with us. They have become deathless. So what does it in the root of it is generate human excellence, not just within you, in the people in front and around and the back of you. Help them to erase those wrong apses. And that's what is the true meaning of Shankara Charya. His name meant that Acharya, Acharya is the person who lives what he talks. So what you and I have to do is to understand those and develop a better, higher, deeper, deeper meaning, dive down deep inside the ocean. We are in the ocean. This is the cosmic ocean. Did you know, recent scientists of the modern world say, the fish doesn't know the rate the whole universe is not filled with water. He thinks water is everywhere. You and I do not know that the divine grace is everywhere. And that's called the cosmic energy. It is every time, every moment, with everyone. When you develop your human excellence, you will start to see it, you will feel it. And what do you do with that? Use that energy to help people. And when you do that, above the green orchard, right on top, you will find it is written, when you want something in your life, give it first. Give. What? What do you want in your life? Give that. So, if you want love, you want recognition, you want fame and name, Give it to other people. Make the child grow up to be somebody. Make the wife or the husband feel six feet tall because my wife and my husband feels I am so. 
automatically you will find that the child, the parent, the people around are feeling. Now, giving it first, we say, once you love me, then I will love you. But when you want love, you have to first give love. Unconditional love to everyone. Now, okay, recognition, love, I understand. What about money? And we are all racing for money, no? You have to do that same principles. Somebody comes and does like this, whether it's a beggar, or it's your friend, or it's your child, give it to them. And just watch, when you give it, your store or bank account suddenly from somewhere will get filled up. And he say, yeah, yeah, it's very nice to say that. It doesn't happen with me. Now it happens with you. There's a beautiful saying of Jesus Christ in Resurrection of Jesus, in which in the volume two, Jesus is saying, if ye shall have faith, nothing shall be impossible to you. Very simple word. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying the same thing. And he says, Yoga Shema. Whatever you want, if you live a pure life with truth, with honesty, with simplicity, with compassion for other people, then whatever you have in your mind, I will give it to you. You will get it. Even if you don't have the thought of it and you're pretty peaceful and happy, you will see God will give it to you. Or in whatever name and form you call. Scientists, I don't believe in God. There's a friend of mine, he wrote to me the other day, and he says, Robin, you know what? I don't believe in God. I'm the biggest atheist in this world. What should I do with myself? So the fact is he himself is realizing that this is not okay. I told him, listen, do you believe in yourself? He said, of course. And then, I said, the person who is an atheist is the person who doesn't believe in himself. You're the presence. So believe in yourself. Don't turn the lens of the camera on to other people. Turn the lens of the camera to with yourself also. And don't look at your negativity and fault and anger and jealousy and greed. But don't look at your self-greatness. How compassionate you are, how smiling you are, how cheerful you are. And ask yourself, can you spread it a little more? You have a nice day. Keep thinking. Thank you.